Uh, wow, great, great win, great team win. So excited for the guys and for the coaches. Uh, we've got a really fun group to be around right now. And uh, whether it's in meeting rooms like we're here or out in the practice field or uh, at the hotel, we got a bunch of guys that believe, a bunch of guys that uh, love each other, a bunch of guys that uh, – uh, challenge each other to be great uh, every day. We continue to challenge the guys to uh, raise the temperature um, of the expectations around here and uh, uh, couldn't be happier with uh, us beating a really good West Virginia team. West Virginia is doggone good. Uh, I've got so much respect for Neil Brown. He's a great coach. They have physical uh, players. They're really athletic and, and our guys um, just found a way. It wasn't pretty all the time but we found a way and we capitalized on some things, whether it was a block punt, big kick return, we we're able to get a couple of turnovers, all those things played into it. But uh, uh, just a fun group right now to be around. We've won four in a row um, and that's, that's really tough to do. I don't care what the competition is. It's, it's four in a row in this league uh, is a, a heck of a lot of fun and uh, excited for the guys. Can you walk us through your decision to go for that fourth down at midfield in the fourth quarter? Yeah, we had not done a great job of stopping those guys late in that third quarter. And, uh, you know, I, I thought we'd get something on the third down. I don't know if it was third and 14 or third and 15. And I said, Mess, we, we, we're going to go for it on fourth down. And luckily their kid got hurt. So then we were able to – not luckily they got hurt. That's a bad way to frame that. You guys understand what I'm trying to say. The fact that we got a chance to regroup for a moment – and be able to get the play we wanted, get the personnel we wanted. I hope the young man's okay. But without question, I didn't hesitate. I looked at Skyler and I said, this is yours. What do you like? What do you like? Because we've got to get a first down. We didn't come here to try to hang on to win. We came here to try to win the football game. And uh, uh, he absolutely ripped the seam route to, to Sammy Wheeler. I'm so pleased for, for Sammy. Made two big-time catches that I know of today, that one and then the one in the end zone. And uh, um, it was a turning point of the game without question. And I'm uh, glad that the guys uh, believe in each other and uh, believed in me that they were going to get that call and, and roll with it. Skyler and Sammy connected twice on two big plays today. What is it about their? You know, Sammy just keeps getting better and better, and he's staying healthy this year, knock on wood. Uh, I thought the touchdown catch in the in the pass that, that Sky threw to him uh, in the end zone was a huge play. It was a third down, third and goal from the four, and we kind of give a little bit of a play action look, and uh, he beats the guy inside, and Skyler's got to throw a bullet that's low, and, and Sammy's got really good hands and made a big play. And I, I love Sammy's confidence, and uh, it's cool that, that Sky has so much confidence in him to be able to make that kind of play, but those were two huge plays. How much pressure does it take it off, take off you, your team when you open both halves with your first possession being touchdowns? Well, we've emphasized it an awful, an awful lot. And, you know, I, I take that a step further fits in the fact of they won the toss and took the football and we got to stop. And I thought that was really big that uh, uh, we were able to get the stop. There was a little bit of wind out there. Um, so we took the wind in the first quarter and we got a big stop. And then I thought we had a great scheme just pounding the football at him on the first drive to get uh, to get the score. Uh, and, and then we get another stop and we'd kind of doctored up this punt block all week that we thought we could get. And we had one chance at getting it. And how about Ty Bowman, um, young freshman from Kansas and uh, makes a big time play. And then uh, Marvin Martin has the wherewithal not to dive on it, but to pick it up and score. So a uh, great start to the, to the game, getting 14 quick points. And how big of a, problem was Luddy Brown in the middle of that yeah he's an exceptional player uh you know he has got 20 rushes for 90 yards if if that's what he was going to have before the game I probably would have been okay with it he had a long of 23 probably because we missed some tackles he bounces off some guys but averages four yards per attempt um he's a terrific terrific running back and uh, uh you know, we knew that he was going to be a focal point because when he is, they're successful. Uh, but I thought we probably got him to throw the ball quite a bit more than, than probably they wanted to. Uh, and the turnovers were huge for us. And finally, how, how much improved is the confidence since maybe even the first half in Lubbock? Oh, it's, it's un belief, uh, confidence, and expectation. Those are the three kind of uh, terms we've kind of come down Come, come up with these last four weeks is is have confidence that that you know the plan you can execute the plan have belief in yourself belief in each other and then let's raise the expectations every week and um, I, I never thought the guys thought there's any chance we were going to lose this football game and to those kids that have been here four years five years six years whatever um, this was a big time win 
because uh, they hadn't had a whole lot of success in their career here. I always look at it as game by game, year by year. Uh, and they got after us last year. And uh, it was really important to, uh, to our older kids that we found a way to beat these guys. How do you think your uh, secondary played today? You know, I thought we did some really good things. Um, they've got some tremendous wide receivers. They've got great length. They've got size. Uh, they got a quarterback that can get them the football. Uh, I, I was impressed with a, with a bunch of them. We, we kept them out of getting a huge play. I know they had 130 yard or something, but we didn't give up a, a big time explosive play. Um, you know, they had a couple of RPOs that, that they got on us. That's that's going to happen. But we also made a big time play and getting a pick on an RPO. And then Deuce Vaughn, you know, had another really good game on the ground, rushing for almost 130 yards. What do you attribute that to? You know, uh, it, it's a pretty quiet 130 yards. Uh, and I know he had, a, he had a long run of 38. We, we ran some different plays with him out of some bigger packages, 22 personnel packages, but uh, uh, hats off to the offensive line and tight ends and fullbacks. I thought guys like Jackson Ean blocked really well. And, and uh, I thought Nick Lenners had a, another terrific game. He got one of our hammer awards because Nick Lenners just, you know, puts his hard hat on and, and blocks a point of attack and does a phenomenal job. And, you know, for us to be able to rush the football like that against a really good team. And once again, we didn't turn it over. And I thought that was critical. I wanted to extend a little bit on the secondary with the East getting the, the interception on the tip there and then and making a, a big pass defense in the first half as well. And then Stubblefield making some plays as well in the run game. How big is it when those guys set the tone for you yeah. early in the game? Both those guys have a ton of energy and they play with a ton of confidence. And I thought um, on the flea flicker, that was as good a play as I'd seen. Uh, they had a touchdown and, and Russ came through and knocked it away. We were so happy we have Russ East on this team. And then, and then Reggie, man, he just – he just finds ways to make plays. Um, not the biggest guy. He's got the biggest heart, that's for sure. Uh, makes some big-time tackles for loss, and, and he's got he's the energy out there for us. He's one, I think, that got the fumble recovery late in the, in the fourth quarter. Um, but uh, love those two guys. Offenses, obviously, you hold them 17 points, 10 points, 12 points over the last three games. What can you say about your defense? Um, doing some better things. We're bending, but not breaking. People are moving the football. These guys had 345 yards, which isn't a great output, but it's, a, it's, it's pretty productive, but to hold them, uh, the points are what matters. You know, we, we had some, they had some drives against us. We were able to get some stops, forced a field goal. They missed a field goal at one time. Uh, you know, if we can hold people under 20 points, we always feel like we have a chance and, uh, just simplifying the things like we have the last three and a half plus games has really helped us. What have you seen with your offense in the second half or last few games that's really been clicking here? Oh, you know, we emphasize a little bit more with how we do some practice things by going some good on good and, and putting the defense first and making the offense sit and then put the offense out there and kind of emphasize that's the start of the second half. Um, I, part of it is, is some of the play calling. We're doing some really good things, play calling. And then, you know, when you flip the field like we do with Malik's return, uh, that was that was a huge play to be able to get the momentum going so we can get a touchdown there. But uh, the belief and the confidence these guys are playing with offensively is, is fun to watch. What factor in are you going out, coming out double tight and then triple tight on the one play? Um, just trying to run it in between the guard and tackles, trying to run it A gap, B gap, because – I think this is a really tough defense as long as athletic as they are to get around the edge. We didn't run as many jet sweep series and stuff. And we thought we could probably come downhill at them. Um, and that's uh, something we haven't done in the last few weeks. And, uh, uh, you know, like even on the, the touchdown play, you know, we run a quick toss out of big people and Skyler kind of blocks the backside. But, you know, those are things that we did in 2019 that we have some guys on the O-line that we've got to probably get back to a little bit more because it sets some play action up as well. But it's some of what of an attitude with our offensive line. They want to run the football. Can you comment on Eli Huggins' play up front? Yeah, Eli it continues to play great football against a, a really good – this is a really good offensive line, and uh, I thought Eli played one of his best games. Coach, Daniel Green, uh, two targeting penalties earlier in the season. He had one that they called today and ended up reversing it. Just what's your reaction when there is a play like that? Well, you, you know, I, I don't know how it's all seen. Um, you know, we try to emphasize it with Daniel. Nothing's malicious in it. Uh, and uh, was happy that they uh, saw that as well, that uh, he probably grazed the guy. Um, something we're going to continue to talk about. Uh, but uh, happy we're able to keep him in the game. Um, I thought there was an easy targeting penalty on Skyler. 
uh, you know, that that's frustrating. That's three weeks in a row. I've gotten, our, we've gotten our quarterback um, hit late and, and uh, our guys are rallying behind him. I can promise you that. And then you, you kind of touched on it as where I was going to go with my next question, but um, along with the targeting penalty, and then he was uh, hit out of bounds. There was not a penalty called on that one. Just how frustrating is it yeah. for you? I didn't think that one should have been called. I don't think that was a big, big deal. I, I, I was fine with that actually. Uh, the other one, I'm glad they, you know, they called it, they, they saw it and, and uh, you know, I, I it's frustrating without question, but you, you control what you can control and that's your players, your team and, and the next play. And, uh, you know, our, our guys, um, settled in and, and, uh, uh, did some good things after that. I'm pretty sure Skylar Thompson hasn't thrown, uh, an incomplete pass on third down in, in the fourth quarter yet this season. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, he's a confident guy and there's probably a couple of fourth down throws as well. And, and once again, th th it was, oh, tough sledding there today. He's 14 of 19 for 138 yards. Not, you know, not huge, huge statistics, but very um, efficient, efficient football and uh, made a couple of really good throws when we had to have good throws. And uh, he was just really confident out there. Um, he made a big time run too, you know, on, on that last drive. I think we had third and five and we were debating on if we were going to kick the field goal and we called it and then we were calling in the headset. He's going to have to keep this one. And he was able to keep it, get the first down and probably kill the rest of the clock off um, that they had to use their timeouts. Chris, I think you guys are up to 12 of 14 on fourth down conversions now this season. Just in general, why do you think you guys have been so good in those situations? Yeah, trust, you know, um, the fact that he, we get usually nine to 10 possessions a game, nine to 11 possessions a game. And so, you know, unless it's a situation and I, and I, I would have gone for it on fourth down when we threw the screen pass to deuce and we end up losing six yards on it. Now it ended up being a good deal because we pinned them down to the five, but then we ended up being fourth and 18 or something. We couldn't do that, but I, I've got a lot of confidence and trust um, in Skyler in our offense and coach mess and the plan that we can get, another set of chains and stuff. It keeps their offense on the sideline. It chews up another three or four minutes typically. And, uh, you know, we came into this game trying to win it. And that's what we decided on the fourth and eight. We're not going to try to hang on and see if we can beat these guys. We said we needed to try to win it. And I know the guys were happy that we made the decision to, to go for it on fourth. Chris, I know you've said the last two weeks in the, in the weekly press conferences that you just you don't care about talking about streaks, wins or losses in that regard. But did you sense any extra sense of relief just from these seniors and these players who just experienced so many losses against West Virginia to finally get a win tonight? I, I, I'm sure of that. But the emphasis throughout the week um, that the kids put on it, that the older guys put on it, that the older guys held each other uh, accountable to, to the standard we have right now, uh, and the expectation to watch more film, to get in and, and uh, understand the game plan, to meet with the quarterback, meet with the secondary guys, whatever you want to say, so that we're prepared. Because this was a big game. I, I saw those guys um, on Friday and, you know, the focus in their eyes, you know, the J-Max and, and Skylers and, and Noah's and guys that have been Fletch that have been doing here for a long time. This was a big, big game for them. And, you know, I, we probably emphasize a little bit too. I don't even know when the heck the last time it was that, that K-State won. I don't pay attention to that other than when the kids say we haven't beaten these guys. Okay. Let's add some emphasis to it. And you don't want to do that all week long. So you got to worry about the process of it. Awesome. It was a great win guys. Thanks.